Well, good evening. Today is the 27th of July, 2019, and today we're going to consider the fifth message in a series of Men Love Darkness Because Their Deeds Are Evil, under the heading of Return to the Word of God, Now or Never. Do you think this is a dark world right now? Do you think the Word of God meant what it said when it said that men love darkness because their deeds are evil? Do you think it meant what it said when it said that darkness is everywhere in this country where there is no light, that is, the light of Jesus Christ? Well, to begin, let's consider again the text for our study. And that text is found in John chapter 3. If you will, please open your Bibles with me to John chapter 3, beginning with verse 16. Once again, everybody knows verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. they are just going to consider another aspect of what we started last time. Men love darkness not only because their deeds are evil, but because they hate God. We talked a little bit about hate, but we didn't get very far into it because we didn't consider all the aspects. This is a study that could take for, you know, hours, days, months, years to go through because it is so pervasive in American society and I'm sure it is pervasive elsewhere in the world. Although in America here we have less excuse than other nations because we have been given the light of the, of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and as a nation have rejected it. Everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. The Word of God is now the subject of hatred in America today, and instead of considering the, the character of God himself, we're going to consider the Word of God as another matter that men hate because their deeds are evil. So the Word of God is hated. If the person of God is hated, his Word must also be hated. And this Word being hated has been going on for a long, long time. If somebody wants to go all the way back to the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3 and say it began there, well, I think that would be an accurate statement to make. But I'd like to consider more specifically a situation that occurred in the scripture in Luke chapter 16. This is something you must absolutely read and think about and meditate all the time because Luke 16 verses 19 through 31 talks about what happens to people who reject the light of Christ and turn instead to darkness and let darkness rule their existence. Let's turn to Luke chapter 16 and consider some verses from this. Do men hate the Word of God? You're about to hear an example of one of these things. In Luke chapter 16, we see a number of characters that are presented, beginning in verse 19. We see a rich man unnamed. We see a poor man, a beggar, named Lazarus. Later on in the same chapter, we see the person of Abraham. And we also know that the narrator of this particular story is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Rather than read the entire story, and I encourage you to read the entire section, chapter 16 of Luke, verses 19 to 31, to get a full understanding of this, I'm only going to treat those sections where apply to where God says men hate his word. Here's a rich man. He's, he, uh, well, first of all, let's consider the poor man. Lazarus, a name of a poor man, stood outside the rich man's house and outside his property, begging, longing for the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Apparently didn't get any. The dogs showed more compassion on the, on the poor man than the rich man did. But later, eventually, poor Lazarus died. Eventually, too, the rich man, who fared sumptuously every day, died and was buried in hell. The rich man, uh, the poor man, rather, Lazarus, was taken to Abraham's bosom, a temporary place of light and refreshment and comfort away from torment and torture. The rich man, on the other hand, having rejected the word of God, instead went to a dark place called Hades. And uh, almost 2,000 years later, there is where he dwells still. So this is not a funny matter. This is a totally serious matter to consider that there is a place that people are going to go to once they finish this life. Lazarus, 
went to Abraham's bosom, a place of light and refreshment, next to Abraham, and the rich man went to hell and was buried. And he was in torments. And again, consider the entire reading before you consider uh, what I'm about to say here. The rich man must have had been a good con artist. He probably was, he was very wealthy, we know that. He knew how to deal with money, knew how to influence people. And so he looked at the situation he was in, the torments, the flame, and everything else, the terrible suffering that was down there, and he had a deal he wished to present to Father Abraham. He said, Then I pray thee, for Father, that thou would set us him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. See, the rich man wanted Lazarus to dip his, the finger of his, uh, his finger in water and cool the rich man's tongue because of the torment. But the rich man apparently wasn't tormented enough. He decided he was going to make a deal with Abraham and see if he couldn't get Lazarus to go back from the dead and speak to his five brethren on top side and say, you don't want to come to this place. You know, go back and, you know, resurrect your, have, your, have yourself resurrected from the dead and go back and tell my five brothers not to come to this place of torment. Abraham's response. Read it, and don't weep yet. But here's what he says. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. That is in verse 29 of this passage. In other words, Moses, or excuse me, Abraham was saying, You already have the Old Testament scriptures in your hand. You know what it says. Read that and believe it. Now, here's the important part of this message, why this man was so against the word of God. Verse 30. The rich man, already in torments, says, Nay, Father Abraham, no! I don't want Moses and the prophets. I want Lazarus to go back from the dead and tell my brothers not to warn them not to come to this place of torment. And if, they, and if he comes back, they will repent. But Abraham said unto him, If they hear not Moses or the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead. Think about that for a moment. Jesus was not only speaking about uh, the, the, what the rich man wanted, Lazarus, to go and, and be resurrected from the dead to go and warn his brother's topside. He was also speaking about himself, about his own death, burial, and resurrection. We know that Jesus rose from the dead three days after he died and was buried. And yet, to this day, Large religious systems, not the least of which is rabbinic Judaism, does not believe that Jesus rose from the dead. So Jesus said here in this, it's not a parable, it's a story about two real people, Lazarus and a rich man. If they will not hear what Moses and the prophets have already spoken, what makes you think you're going to believe that when I rise from the dead, that you're going to believe that I did so? That's essentially what Jesus was saying. If you don't believe Moses and the prophets, after all, they spoke of me, Jesus said. How are you going to believe when the time comes for me to rise from the dead? Well, we know the rest of that story. Go to Matthew chapter 28 and see how, they, how the uh, scribes, the Pharisees, the religious rulers in Jerusalem, work with Pilate to try to make it, uh, to cover up the issue, to make it, make it look like he hadn't risen, risen from the dead, but instead his body was stolen, or something like that. And on and on it goes. Anything but to believe God and take him at his word. So, that's another example of why men love darkness, they hate God, and they hate His Word. They don't want to believe it. All that was required in the Old Testament, the Messiah hadn't come yet. Jesus had not come and started His ministry. All they had to do back in those days was just simply believe. Abraham believed God. It was, a, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. That's all they had to do. When Rahab the harlot was at Jericho. All she had to believe was the spies that were sent into Jericho, the place was going to be destroyed. She wanted to be spared, and her whole family to be spared. All she had to do was believe God. She did, and she was spared. One generation later, same thing with Ruth. She believed God. She used to be a Moabite. She used to worship false gods and idols. And yet Ruth believed God, went back to Bethlehem with Naomi, and lived there. And lo and behold, there they came across, uh, Naomi and Ruth came across uh, the wealthy but very... Uh, eligible bachelor Boaz and eventually Ruth and Boaz got married. That was very important because that lineage leads to King David and eventually to Jesus himself. Okay, so what have we learned here tonight? Not too much because I'm not spending enough time on this. We're just taking this in little 10, 12 minute increments 
and uh, hopefully you will return uh, to this video and look at it one more time and consider the message that is here. But before we end this message, I have one more section to go to. Let's turn to the Old Testament, book of Amos. Amos, chapter 8. If you have your Bibles handy, open to Amos, chapter 8. Starting with verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, and they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. But I can just see the uh, the critics out there saying, well, that was the Old Testament, that was uh, directed, that was a... Uh, a uh, Jewish prophet, you know, speaking to the people of Israel. True. But, what does it say in Romans chapter 15, verse 4? Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So this message does not contain any hope, but it does contain a warning that at some point in time it's going to be hard, if not impossible, to find the word of God anywhere. People are going to be looking for it. They, they know there's words of comfort in there. They know there's words of salvation. They've learned it somewhere. They've heard it somewhere. They may have heard it on the television. They may have heard it on a radio program. They may have heard it, God forbid, that they heard it on this video. But some point in time, they're going to want to find out what the Word of God has to say about the awful tribulation that's coming and what they can do about it. And they're not going to be able to find out why. Why? Because men love darkness, because their deeds are evil, and they hate the Word of God. time is coming when Jesus is going to come and take his church home. But salvation is not a difficult process in spite of the fact that many in religious circles have made it that way. In Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10, we've gone through it a number of times already, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart one believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Remember, even in the Old Testament, before Jesus came, all they had to do to be saved and be counted worthy to, to, to appear in the presence of God and to stand before the Son of Man eventually was to believe what God said, just to believe Him and take Him at His word. That is my prayer for everybody that listens to this video, is that you will just simply take God at His word. And also, while you're doing it, be ready, because Jesus is coming soon. Good day.